Hello YouTube and welcome to a brand new Unity 3D LAN tutorial. So sorry it's a long way to tutorial, I've been very very busy at university, a lot of hand-ins were coming near Christmas, so yeah. So what I'm going to do is show you today how to make this character walk around while avoiding obstacles. Now there's a good thing and a bad thing about it. The advantages as I've found is that, well, you're walking around avoiding obstacles, you can literally place this tell them to walk around this temple or anything. The disadvantage is it's only one time rendered. So what that means is while in the editor you tell it this is an obstacle, this is an obstacle, this is an obstacle. The bad thing is I haven't found out yet but I'm not I don't think you can make it update constantly so say your character walks in front of it they'll try to walk straight into you. I think I know how to fix it but I'm not going to try that yet. But yeah, it's really simple to do. So first thing we're going to do, click this, and we're going to type, we're going to click static right there. And we're going to go to Window, Navigation, and it'll bring up this window. And all I'm simply going to do is make sure Navigation Layer is on default and click Bake. And what this will do is create something called a Navigation Layer or a Baking thing. Yeah. And what it is, is over this, it'll create over our entire land map here and here. Because if you look, they are joined and apparently joining them together makes it do it as one. But what it will do is basically put a very, 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 very thin thing, a plane if you wish, over it all. Now this plane is invisible when you're playing, so it doesn't take up any, well, as much processing power. But what it does is it basically says where and where not this character can walk. So if, say, a part of it's hidden, which you will see, means they can't walk up that. They'll stop right next to it. And you'll see that later. But as you can see, while it's still baking, I can still move around, and it's still doing it down here. That's because Unity's programmed it, because you can do very large-scale terrains with it, but it takes that long to do. And this tutorial will probably take over 10 minutes unless I speed it up to do that. But yeah, so in order to make this character move, it is essentially one line of code. But that's only if um, you want it to go to one place then stop, or unless you want it to follow your character, which we're gonna do because we are clever. We are programmers, all of us. Even if you say you're not, you're just learning. So what we're gonna do is click this character, and we actually need to go to the inspector again and open up Land Enemy AI. Now, if you haven't got this code, don't worry about it. I can tell you how to do it without it. But for those of you who have got it, what I want you to do is go into the first one here where it says if the ignore char is true and it does all this gobbledygook, get rid of everything but the timer inside. So the bit where it um, increases the waypoint, the range, the rigid body and the look at, get rid. Because the nav mesh does it all for us. And we also don't need range here. As you can see, it's not used anywhere else. So we can get rid. Keep the character range though, because we use that quite often. So in here, I apologize for that. My doggy's going crazy for some unknown reason. But yeah, and what we're going to do is also get rid of the waypoints and current waypoint, because we don't need those either. Just like that. So now, when we start it, this character should essentially do nothing. Hopefully. Big hopefully. But yeah, so what we're going to do is, just for this tutorial, we're going to make it chase your character. I think that'd be cool. So in here, we're going to type, get component, and if it helps, you can put this. It don't matter, but I like putting this. So get component, if you just put get component, whatever this script's attached to, so it's attached to this character, it will go into it and grab a component. So obviously, that means we need to add a component of some kind. So we're going to go add component and nav mesh agent right there. Now what I said at the beginning, how if it finds your character it will run straight into it, that's what I think the nav mesh obstacle is for. And as you can see it's only available for the pro version. So I might have been right, we can't use it though. So we click nav mesh agent, but we can make it change anyway. Now this controls your speed and everything. It may not control when a character's walking or running, but you can go in and edit it all. So, nav mesh walkable, everything, means it can walk on water or it, it can do that, basically. But what we're going to do is simply change the speed to, say, 10. 
and we'll leave it at that. And if you zoom in, you can see how it's got this cylinder outline on it. That is the nav mesh agent. It also acts as a collider. So we're going to keep the box collider just so the characters can't jump over the, that and like knee it in the head but go straight through it. Because we don't want that. So we need to go and grab hold of this nav mesh agent. So we'll go back to our get component and in here type its exact name, nav mesh agent. All capitals, no spaces. And then after that we'll put dot and now we're inside the script of nav mesh agent. But it's not showing something there which we need, which is perfectly okay. We need to go and get its property of destination, which basically means where does this character go to. So it's a vector 3 destination, so we'll type destination equals now what do we want it to go to I bet you've already all guessed haven't you go on tell me you've guessed I know you have well done have a virtual cookie the character so we're gonna type game object dot find character and since it's a vector 3 we need transform dot position and what that'll do is constantly update tick 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 every time it's chasing us to follow our character cool right yeah, I know. So cool. So, this is only halfway done. And this tutorial has been running for six minutes. As you can see, it's a big thing. So, right here, we've got an error. Line 64, which is... Do, 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 in here. Ooh, that's new. So, there we have... Is an awkward one, but we're going to fix it. So, after this here, where we've got this dot navigation, we're actually going to note out everything. So if you put a slash then an asterisk sign, thank you for my colleague at college, Jessica, for telling me that. That is called an asterisk and not a star sign. But we're going to hide all of this. And you may be thinking, well, why? Big reason why it's causing issues. So, as you can see, we've got a blank if statement here for one. So we're going to hide it, and we just put an asterisk and a slash. And that'll note big columns out. So now we should not get any other errors. And as you can see, that's just sped up. Wow. So EOF found a bracket it doesn't need. 137. So where's 137? There. It doesn't need that bracket. So. Okay, so Unity was um, having a small glitch there. Um, it, there was no error. But yeah. So. Now that it's going to nav mesh agent, if you click your floor, now that it's done, and go to navigation, you can see it's painted it all in this blue layer. And as you can see, all the bits what haven't got blue on, <coughs> excuse me, means you can't walk on it. That cough attacked me then. Um, right there, look. So all this, it can walk across. So, let's make it follow the character. Oh wait, we already have. So, we're going to put the scene view here. I'm going to click our little character here. There. So now that it's got that, we can see it here. So we're going to click play and hopefully it will follow us. So as you can see. Oh no, I clicked off it. It's coming towards us right now, look. And you can see that red line. So if I start to run away, you can see it's real timely updated. I didn't mean to walk in the water. and it will follow everywhere we go so if I try to bring it back you can see it's constantly updated so if I run up here you'll see it's stuck because it can't get to us, it knows it can't so it's stuck but if we walk down here it should come back towards us. So what do you think? It will now chase us. So let's speed it up a little. The rate, the speed to a hundred. Now it will follow us. As you can see it stops right on us. So let's, let's have a chase. As you can see it's redrawing the line as I run around. And it's decided to stop. But yeah so it's not like in the hills, but as you can see, it's now coming to get us. So let's come back around so it's chasing us. 
and I'm going to turn the acceleration up to 50 so it comes towards us faster and I'm going to run over this hill here and look at that it's coming to get us now okay it's glitching there but there we go it's found us what do you think so we've just successfully coded AI with one line it will now follow us it took us 10 minutes that's pretty damn good thank you yeah thank you for watching <laughs> uh, what we will do is eventually make it randomly choose a place to go so instead of going over here then over here then over here, following our character we don't want every single one following our character that will be a nightmare so we're gonna make it instead randomly choose a spot to go to that'll be cool right see you later